Hello YouTube, it's Grosama, and here I have from the high gray gun in the origin line is the full armor RX-78 Heavy Gundam. Now this particular mobile suit I think is just strictly fantastic. Uh, I did have the Master Gray version of them, but I never built it. I kept kind of just kept it in the box and it stayed in the backlog for a while. Um, and then ultimately, I sold it to someone that just really wanted it more than what I did um, because the old Master Gray was, I think, was uh, based off the 1.5 uh, RX 78 2. No, sorry, it was based off of the um, uh, Perfect RX, uh, the Perfect Gundam, the RX 78 Perfect. Uh, so I just was not into it. I didn't like the aesthetics. Um, I just not, Maybe not as much of the sex, but I, I guess the base form uh, that the Master Grade was using But then fast forward to 2018 They announced the high grade gun in the origin one now this one is it's not extremely different uh, but the subtle differences as far as like the markings as well as like the color applications uh, overall kind of like uh, more slimmed down aesthetics I think look fantastic so I just kind of plunged and was like you know what I'm gonna go ahead and buy this one and just not have to worry about the master grade since I'm more into the high grade line anyways uh, but anyways let's go ahead and take a look so let me go ahead and show you some of the items that I used in order to give like the weathering effect uh, pretty much use some mr. weathering color some ground brown I also use multi black and then I use rust orange to pretty much give it a very subtle rusting effect. And then I use some yellow paint just for one little area. Then I use bronze for the joints as well as the thrusters. And then some red paint for the top of the sensor. A silver marker for the thrusters and other little silver areas on the kit. And then I tagged it up with some of this Tamiya Weathering Master. Uh, pretty much just used the titanium and kind of went on some of the edges of the actual mobile suit. So when it comes to sticker sheets, you're gonna have this one big one, uh, much like with the FSD and all the other like high grade uh, gun in the origin kits. Uh, it's really, really nice. Um, I didn't use all of them because there's a lot of white ones that I just didn't really think uh, was needed on here, but I think it does look fine. I just pretty much used all the orange ones. And you're also gonna get a little sticker sheet for the kit itself. The only thing you're really gonna get is gonna be stickers for the eyes as well as for the sensors, the front and back. Okay, so taking a look at the head, the head is, you know, pretty much the, is, is very similar to the other ones as far, as far as like the local type and the FSD Gundam. There's just some noticeable difference with the like little side vents right there. Uh, but the overall aesthetics are pretty much the same, just like very subtle differences in the detail. Um, it has a clear red piece for the visor, but you can still see the eyes, uh, especially when you paint them, you know, like a bright gold or something. They're really gonna show up in the light and it's just gonna make it look so much more menacing. Um, now I did, there are stickers for like that little um, red piece up inside like where the uh, the camera is as well as the back camera But you know just go ahead and you know put some primer down there and then paint that red is gonna really do some uh, Some better work and justice uh, than the stickers and then for the Vulcans You know I just went ahead and painted that silver So I think that came out a little bit better than just kind of keeping it plain um, But overall the head is pretty much the same as you would expect so when looking at the chest piece, uh, the chest is definitely going to be a lot different than like the FSD Gundam as well as the North American type or the local type. Uh, it's going to be completely new mold. So, uh, you know, once again, this kind of like puzzles me as to why this is the P Bandai, where you're going to release the local, the North, and the FSDs, um, which are kind of more similar to each other with, you know, very subtle differences. But this feels almost like a completely different kit in which a lot of the parts on here are going to be completely different. But looking at the chest, the uh, the chest vents are going to be different. These are going to actually be molded in uh, orange, uh, such as like, you know, the same parts right here in the front skirt. Uh, but I just went ahead and painted those silver and then I put uh, some like rust paint on here uh, just to kind of give it like... I don't know, like a little rusting uh, look. I don't think it really came out that well. Um, it kind of looks more like maybe sand kind of got stuck in there. But overall, um, I just want to go ahead and add a little bit of color instead of just leaving them silver. Uh, you are going to have stickers pretty much plastered all over here. So like all this, all these like little orange lines right here, um, all throughout the kit are going to be stickers. So you don't really have to, um, I mean, if you really want, you can go ahead and, and paint it. So you don't really have to use them, but it's up to you because this is going to be like a little groove uh, right on top of here. So it's going to be pretty easy to paint. I just decided not to uh, because I was going to use the rest of the stickers and I was kind of not confident in my ability to mix the paints to get the exact color. 
All right, and taking a look at the backpack, they're gonna have the thrusters right here in the back. Uh, just went ahead and painted the thrusters as well as this little piping right here, bronze, with a little bit of uh, pretty much blue metallic on the inside to kind of give it just a little bit more of appeal. Uh, but these are actually all supposed to be the same color, uh, pretty much gonna be gray, and I just didn't think it looked that good, so just went ahead and painted that, but it's really up to you if you wanna go ahead and utilize that. And then looking at the waist, the waist isn't really anything special. Uh, just got some decals right there and that's pretty much about it. So the arms are also going to be different, uh, pretty much like the entire arm, I would say except for the hands. Uh, the hands look like they're exactly the same as all the previous uh, RX-78 uh, Gun of the Origin line. Um, the shoulders are also different, they don't have like this little piece right here on the uh, on the tip of the shoulder. Um, just everything about this arm is different and it's, it's not like it's different for the better or worse, it's just kind of like it's different for its own sake of being different. So the legs are also gonna be very different. Um, there's similarities uh, when it comes to kind of the shapes of like certain parts, like uh, the front skirts kind of like have a similar shape, uh, as well as like the little knee, uh, the knee armor. Those are gonna be very similar, but there's just very minor differences. Uh, some actually, you know, are, are fairly big differences. Uh, probably like up here on the, uh, the leg, there's not a lot of detail, whereas uh, the FSD is gonna have detail right inside there. Um, but overall, like the differences just keep making this suit so much more unique and uh, keeps making me puzzled as to why this was a P Bandai. Okay, so looking at the articulation, the head's gonna be on a ball joint right here on the neck piece. Uh, so it can also it can pretty much move like back and forth like that, uh, and then side to side, and then since it's on a ball joint, it can just swivel all the way around. So looking at the main body, uh, the main body's articulation is actually pretty fantastic. This little piece right here, you can just kind of flip this up a little bit, and then this is gonna be on multiple different joints on the inside, uh, pretty much on here, so it's gonna be like a ball joint, and then it's gonna have like poly caps up inside here, uh, but basically you're gonna get a really nice uh, bend all the way down. So if you're really trying to get some crazy move, uh, some crazy ab crunches, I mean this kit, I, I don't really, I, I don't think I've seen a high grade RX-78 kit or any, any related RX-78 kit that could do something like that. Uh, but that's pretty fantastic and it's gonna be on a little ball joint so it can definitely move all the way around uh, without any kind of problems. Not really much of like a backwards because this only, is only gonna be able to go forward on the inside of the abs. Um, so, I mean, you don't really need to go backwards, I don't think, but uh, since it's on a you know a little polycat, you can kind of like cheat it a little bit and just kind of wiggle it behind, but I think that looks ugly, so let's just go ahead and keep it together like so, and then obviously you can go ahead and move it uh, all the way around. And then looking at the back thrusters, these are just gonna be on little ball joints, so it uh, can't really move side to side too much. Um, like it can go like inwards, but it can't really go outwards, but it can definitely go back and forth like that. And the same thing for this one, uh, cause it's just gonna be hindered by the little um, pieces, the little plastic right here, but it can definitely move back and forth like that. So I think that's pretty nice. And then the little piece where the beam saber is, this can move back and forth. Um, that's pretty much about it for that. And then the shoulder mounted cannon can basically go up about that much and then all the way down to the shoulder. And then looking at the arms, these are gonna be on little ball joints, but this is actually pretty amazing. So there's a piece inside here uh, that is basically like a little poly cap right here. That poly cap allows it to move outwards like that. And then this piece is gonna be on like little two little pegs on the inside, right inside the, uh, the chest, but it can come out that much and then this little poly cap can make it go forward that much. So I just think that's pretty fantastic to kind of have this piece um, go in two different directions, Vice just kind of having it on a single ball joint. Uh, but this is gonna be on a, a little um, ball joint peg right here. So just kind of plug that in, but it can definitely move around like so. And then the elbow is also gonna have two points of articulation, one up here, one down here. Uh, so for the first little joint, you can basically get it at a 90 degree angle like that. And then the second one's gonna be uh, not as much of a 180, but it's gonna be pretty far up there. And then the hand is gonna be on a single ball joint, so you can kind of just move it around like so. And then looking at the waist, uh, the front skirts right here are gonna be connected to one piece, but if you just go ahead and cut them, uh, you definitely get that separation when it comes to articulation. And then these side skirts, these pretty much don't really move too much. Like it, it goes down flush like that, and then it's gonna come up about that much. So you're not really getting too much movement with that. And then the back skirt obviously is not gonna be moving uh, at pretty much at all. Um, I don't know why they, they couldn't make this move, but they can definitely make the front skirts move. But it kinda is what it is. 
So looking at the legs articulation, the first thing I want to show you is basically this little gimmick. Uh, so the legs can basically move backwards and then forwards if it can get it, but it can move forward like so. So you get a little bit of range of movement when it comes to uh, how you're going to go ahead and pose this mobile suit, which I think is pretty fantastic, but it's a little bit troublesome at times to really get this to move all the way back. And so looking at the hips, uh, legs can pretty much go out that much and do the splits. Looking forward, it can go all the way forward like so, but going backwards, it's not really going to be able to do much due to the skirts not being able to move at all. Right here below the hip, it can go ahead and swivel all the way around. There's another set of two points of articulation for the legs. So right here, it can go 90 degrees just like the arm and then basically all the way back like so. Uh, but if you kind of bring it forward, you get a little bit extra like that. So one thing I want to go ahead and show you is the little gimmick that basically this is like massive great quality in which whenever you're posing this or you know you're basically moving the leg you're going to see the kneecap can actually separate from the main body that's just like some massive great quality stuff right there and i'm very very impressed the front skirts are also on little ball joints right right on the inside uh so it can move around just a little bit but it's not really going to be doing too much so it kind of just like stays in one little position and then the feet are also on ball joints so you get that forward backwards movement as well as side to side um, now i do wish that you could have had maybe like a little bit more of a, of a, a movement like with the entire foot and in the inside right here or maybe even have like separation in the foot to where you can have a little bit of a toe bend uh, it doesn't seem like they 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 really couldn't do that i think they really they, i think they could to be honest uh but you know either way it's still really nice so starting off with the accessories you get two beam sabers however you're only going to get one beam saber hilt so you basically just get the extra one for whatever reason overall though i think the beam saber looks really good with this kit if you want a dual beam saber that I mean that's fine but i kind of think the one beam saber is more than enough and you're also going to have the shoulder mounted cannon. I think it looks pretty fantastic. Although it's going to be molded in one single color, the gray color, uh, you can definitely paint some details in there. So the next accessory you're going to have is going to be the shield. This is the same shield as the FSD Gundam. Uh, the only difference is going to be how you're going to mount it, which is going to be uh, this little piece right here. So you disconnect that piece and then we're going to go ahead and connect this one onto the arm. So the shield looks really good. Um, overall, it's the same thing as the FSD, so no noticeable difference in my opinion. Uh, but hey, I would probably recommend you doing some more battle damage to it than what I did. Uh, well, I didn't do any battle damage, but some more weathering as well as uh, some battle damage. I think it would give it just a better looking effect. The next weapon you're gonna have is going to be the special beam rifle. Uh, overall, I think it looks really good. It's only gonna have kind of one movement, which is gonna be uh, the little sight right here. So you can kind of just move this back and forth. Uh, but there's gonna be no color added to this uh, via stickers. You're really gonna to have to do the, uh, the painting and everything yourself. I didn't really go all crazy. I just kind of added a little bit here and then I kind of paint the, uh, the scope yellow just I guess just to give it a little added effect and then some little weathering then you also can get this extra little hand which is going to be uh, exclusively designed to hold uh, this you know weapon or any other weapon I guess is compatible but it's going to have two little pegs on the inside to uh, pretty much connect it and, and really seal it so I think the weapon looks really good with this mobile suit. Uh, the only thing I just don't understand is like, is it really canon for this uh, suit? I can definitely go on uh, Gundam Wiki and see if it is, but to my knowledge, it, it really shouldn't be since it already is going to have the next weapon that we're going to discuss. And that weapon being the flame launcher. Uh, this is kind of like the main focus of the entire mobile suit. Uh, I think it looks really, really awesome. It has kind of like multi... Um, like a multi-functionality when it comes to this so right here it's going to have like a little mini gun uh down at the bottom and then on the top is going to be little rockets now all this is actually still molded in uh that tannish color there's no uh stickers to my knowledge on here actually yeah there's definitely no stickers on here it's supposed to be just very very plain when it comes to uh that kind of like very dark brown as well as the tan uh, same thing for this little top piece which I'm going to show you how it connects to the arm uh, but what I did is I went ahead and just painted some red right there for the missiles painted some silver right here for the uh, the front little barrel and then uh, down right here on the like I guess that's a scope I uh, just did a metallic blue thought it came out pretty good because this is actually what the color on the master grade looks like and then on the back I just did a little bit of silver for these little vents uh, but there is a little bit of articulation where these kind of like I don't know what these would be for uh, let me know in the comments below exactly what this is you know used for is I don't know if it's just to direct the exhaust or something but uh, that's kind of like what I was thinking 
Now the way you're gonna connect this is basically you're gonna plug the entire arm right inside here and it's gonna fit you know, fairly well, but you're gonna take this extra part and then you're gonna add this right on top, like so, and it's just gonna snap and it's gonna be very, very secure. So when it comes to the overall like presentation with this uh, weapon, I think it looks so, so good. And it does not make it like back heavy, front heavy, side heavy. It, it holds up extremely well. Um, that's very surprising because a lot of high grades, I just always you know have issues if there's a, a lot of weight on one side. The whole overall kit is just not really gonna be stable. Um, but I kind of have this kit leaning back as you can see, and it's holding that weapon very nicely. So um, I would say when I, whenever I get around to the posing, uh, this is gonna be a fan, fantastic kit to pose and definitely display on the shelf. So I, I would just overall say, um, you know, whenever you get this kit, just experiment with the poses. And here I have the FSD directly next to them. Uh, so the major differences are gonna be the little side vents on here, uh, pretty much where the head is. Uh, the chest is also gonna be different. As you can see, the, these vents are completely different. Uh, the markings are very subtle, but they're different. The chest piece is different. Uh, these little like shoulder missile pods, they're pretty much absent from the FSD. Uh, like, like I mentioned, nearly every single thing is gonna be completely uh, unique to this particular mobile suit. Uh, but I do think it looks pretty fantastic side to side. Um, so even if you decide like, hey, I really want to get one or the other, um, you're just going to be a happy camper because when I reviewed the FSD, I was extremely satisfied uh, with the overall posability and just the aesthetics of this mobile suit. So um, getting either one is going to be amazing. Uh, I would probably just lean more towards the heavy Gundam uh, just due to the fact that it has the, um, you know, this nice, you know, pretty much big flame launcher weapon. Um, so that looks good. Good. It comes with the same shield as this guy, uh, so if you're really kind of like looking for the shield, you're also going to get it with him. Um, and this one probably comes with just a little bit more accessories, so you are going to have like a little shoulder Gatling gun like that, uh, but you're also going to get some shoulder uh, mounted um, cannons for this one as well. But overall, it's just kind of up to you and which one you're really feeling and which one you kind of like, you know, desire overall. So what do I think about this kit? Well, I don't think there's any noticeable flaws to be honest. Like. For a high grade kit, this thing is amazing. Now I could make the argument like, hey, maybe there should have been more uh, color separation. Maybe this should have been uh, water slide decals. Like I can make a lot of arguments, but I think for what you're getting for the money that you're gonna put into this, this is completely worth it. And if this kit is battling any other kits in your collection, best believe that they're gonna be at a disadvantage. With a shoulder mounted cannon as well as a flame launcher, just barrages of missiles as well as that little mini gun at the bottom, this thing is just gonna be taking all kinds of heavy fire. So it's gonna be really hard for your kits to go ahead and retaliate. So even when the enemy mobile suit is trying to gain some distance, even when attacking and trying to go ahead and take some steps back, the thing is the Heavy Gundam has such good thrust power as well as a good range of posability that he's gonna dodge all those incoming attacks and he's gonna go in for that close range kill. And just like that, the FSD Gundam also met his demise. But that's it for me guys, definitely thank you for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and definitely stay tuned for some of the next reviews, especially this weekend, which is going to be a very, very big weekend, and I will be seeing y'all in the next review. Bye-bye.